In this lesson, we are going to learn about the application of physics in designing and building skyscrapers. The tallest building in the world is a title that is coveted by many. For six years, between 1997 and 2003, that glory belonged to our very own, the Petronas Twin Towers in Kuala Lumpur. Standing at a grand height of 452 meters or 1,483 feet, each of the towers has 88 inhabitable floors and a decorative spire. Engineers and architects love the challenges involved to build higher. Corporations and cities compete for the recognition and fame of owning the highest. This makes the race to build taller, higher skyscrapers one of the most competitive contests in construction. Can you imagine what are the challenges of building a skyscraper? In 2003, the completion of the Taipei 101 building in Taiwan made it the tallest building in the world. Standing at an impressive height of 509 meters, it has 101 floors. However, before the year 2009, we may see yet another champion claiming the world's tallest title as construction is already underway in countries like Hong Kong, China, the United States of America, and the United Arab Emirates. Skyscrapers are built mainly because they are convenient. A lot of living and workspace can be created using relatively small is especially important in busy cities where businesses require their premises to be centrally located. The picture shows the next four tallest buildings in the world. As you can see, they are all located in major cities. They are the Sears Tower, Chicago, the Jin Mao Building, Shanghai, the Empire State Building, New York City, the Central Plaza, Hong Kong. If we were to line these magnificent buildings beside each other, this is how they would measure up. In this lesson, we'll look at the innovations that made building these incredible structures possible. The main obstacle when trying to build upwards is the downward pull of gravity. We can gain an idea of the effects of gravity on building upward by making at this analogy. To make a sturdy cheerleading pyramid, more people are needed at the bottom layer to support those on top. This is how skyscrapers are built. Real pyramids and other stone buildings also work this way. More material has to be used at the bottom to support the weight of the top layer. A pyramid could be built indefinitely by increasing its base. This is how skyscrapers are built. Tall buildings have a history that date back hundreds of years. The ancient Egyptians and Incans built pyramids and temples. Medieval European and Asian castles had tall towers and turrets made out of heavy stone. The walls of these structures were thick and sturdy to support the structure. Rooms, however, were cramped and dark with little or no windows. This is because windows would weaken the structure of these walls. The Industrial Revolution saw engineers experimenting with two new kinds of building material, iron and steel, which are lighter and stronger than stones, brick or mortar. Steel in particular was found to be light, could be made into tensile and strong beams. The 10-story home insurance building in Chicago was the first building supported by vertical steel columns and horizontal steel beams. Since the support came from the steel skeleton of columns and beams, the walls could have windows. We will now see how the modern-day steel skeleton of a skyscraper works to support it. 
Firstly, steel beams are riveted end-to-end, -end, forming vertical columns. At each floor level, horizontal steel beams, known as girder beams, are also connected to the vertical columns. These colossal three-dimensional grid, known as the superstructure, directly transfers the weight of the building to the vertical columns. The weight is then transferred to the substructure under the building. The curtain wall only needs to support its own weight, thus enabling the structure to use a lot of glass. Click on the Build button to know how the skyscrapers are built. The vertical column transfers the weight of the skyscraper into the substructure. Each component of the substructure is made up of an iron plate that sits on several layers of horizontal steel beams known as the grillage, which rests on a thick concrete pad. Once the steel is in place, the entire structure is covered in concrete. It is designed in such a way as to distribute the concentrated weight from the columns over a wide surface. Ultimately, the building's weight is supported by the hard clay material under the earth. We have already seen that the weight of the structure is the main challenge that engineers have to deal with when building skyscrapers. In this activity, we will see what other factors are to be considered and how to deal with them. Select your challenge to see what has to be done. Forces that act on a structure are called loads. A strong, stable structure can withstand various kinds of loads. To be able to build a strong, stable structure, we need to determine the external forces that will challenge it. Choose a challenge to see how it affects big structures.
in designing and building skyscrapers, various laws of physics need to be applied in order to ensure the safety and functionality of the building.